everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. This week I'm going to be continuing on with my 1883 bustle dress project, which I started last week. So if you have not yet seen that first video, I went over how I made the base skirt for this project. And this week I am going to be continuing on with the overskirt and hopefully maybe even getting into the bodice and or other like bustle drape decoration. So we'll see how far I get since this week is also Thanksgiving. So there's a lot going on. So right now you can see the overskirt fabric that's just kind of draped on the form. I was playing around with the drape of the actual skirt part, which you can't see obviously because it is out of the frame right here, but I was just kind of playing around with shapes, trying to get the shape of my fashion plate, which is this fashion plate right here. By the way, if you have not seen the first video on this project, I will link that down below in the description so that you can go watch how I made the skirt. But for the overskirt, again, I was playing around with those drapes and then I was looking at Isabella as in prior attire. I was looking at her books, the Victorian dressmaker books, and trying to see if she had anything that was kind of a similar shape that I could use for a pattern. And I actually found two that are kind of similar. So one of them is in volume two, and it's actually the same skirt that I used for the base skirt, which is her 1884 through 86 walking dress right here. And so she has a bustle dress drape pattern that looks kind of like this right here. And I thought, okay, well, she's getting a similar-ish shape to what I'm going for. So that one might maybe work. And then she also has in the first book, a seaside bustle that is, well, it's an 1887 yachting outfit, this one right here, which also kind of has a similar drape shape. I feel like mine is kind of in between the two. And this one, the pattern looks like this. So it's significantly smaller pattern piece wise than the other one from the other book. So because I don't want to like do an actual mock-up for this because that would just be a waste of fabric basically and also whatever I mock it up in it's not going to act the same as silk. So like I could mock it up in a cotton sheet all day long but I'm still not going to get the look of like how it's going to really react the same way as this silk. So my thought is I'm just going to make the one in the second book because it's significantly bigger of a pattern piece than the first one. That way, if it doesn't work, I can just start like cutting it down basically, or really I'll probably fold it first and then cut it down to try to get the shape that I want. But I mean, it's a relatively, <laughs> I want to say simple shape. I mean, it's it's one piece of fabric, but then it's, it's just kind of a weird shape overall. Um, but I think that that will hopefully work. This is the front drape, by the way, that I'm talking about, not the back. The back is not shown in the fashion plate, so I kind of get to make up my own idea of what I want to do there. But yeah, I think I'm gonna give that one a try and just cut that piece in this sized up to my size because Isabel is smaller than me, both shorter and like smaller around. Um, and just see how that kind of goes from there. And then I can start incorporating the various like trim pieces onto that. I'm also tempted, probably not for the front drape, but I think yes, for the back drape, I'm actually tempted to line the plaid check fabric here with the red so that I can do some interesting things in like turning it up and revealing the red in different twists and forms. So I think that is probably what I'm going to do for the back. And then the kind of over that bit drape is going to be a really, really large red bow, like the bow in this fashion plate right here, which is my other big inspiration. And so I feel like kind of turning it up to reveal some red in the overskirt and then having the bow, I just feel like that's kind of an interesting combination. So let's get going with cutting out the front drape first out of the check. And yeah, we'll see where that takes us. So hi Lion, I have actually been able to kind of just drape up the shape without fully, you know, cutting anything off without at all cutting anything off. So basically what we're seeing over here in this dark area is that I've pleated up a section here, which is basically a horizontal section. And there's five pleats that are pretty deep, about five inches total each pleat. And then over here, I've just kind of tucked this in to create a sort of curved waist effect, like in her pattern. And then over on this side, I 
I have just bunched things up at the bias angle over here like in the pattern and as you can see what I'm sort of getting here in the front down below are those little semi-circular drape looking items that were in the fashion plate inspiration and I think that once this is pulled up a little bit more what we're going to see on the bottom here is that exact horizontal drape. Now I do think my fabric is actually a little bit too long. I need to cut maybe about five inches off or really it's too wide because that is the width of the fabric right there that's across the grain on that end. But yeah I think that is going to be the answer there. So once I actually have it cut off and I can scrunch that bit up more by scrunch I mean pleat then this should get its correct angle and once I cut off the excess length should get its correct angle across the skirt. So now I feel much more comfortable cutting off the excess fabric that you can see running all the way along my floor. So I don't know how well you can see the little white dots there but I've realized that her pattern shape is not quite what I'm going for and so while I had it draped up on the form and kind of bunched up on the side I put in some pins and I'm realizing you can see a lot more of the pins over here but I'm realizing that the shape starts like on the right hand side with what her pattern is and then as we get over here it changes and it's really more of like a big old scoop around like a big curve that I think is the actual pattern so I am going to go ahead and cut that out and we'll see if that works so I just kind of like cut off the end over there so that it was a shorter piece I was working with but it's still a straight like rectangle piece this is definitely not it this is what I'm going for this is what is happening right now um no so I'm gonna have to start over because this is like now actually pleated up over there and it's totally wrong. I think I figured it out. So the changes that I made were I spaced out my pleats over here a whole ton, starting them a lot closer towards the front and just making them a lot smaller and spacing them out a lot more. And then this bottom edge right here, that's actually a curved edge. So there's a whole lot of fabric that's tucked up behind there that I've just folded out of the way for now, but it is not a straight edge anymore. It is a full on curve. This edge over here is also a little bit curved. It does go out to like the edge of the fabric by the time we get kind of I think well actually I guess technically it's up here so that is curved as well and then we do have the pleats up here too but they're pulled a little bit farther like there's obviously excess material that we need to get rid of and I also added a couple of pleats in over here and then this is still kind of that curve-ish shape I think I mean it's honestly hard to tell what all this is and it's going to be a challenge to like cut off the excess and get this to look the same but I think that this is the right shape it's a little bit poofy down here right now as opposed to kind of those lines that I want but I think this might be the closest that I can figure out how to get of course this does make things a bit challenging because that means that this red band that goes across here can't probably be cut on the straight grain it might have to literally be the same curve that this curve is so I did one little tweak that fixed both of the problems that I was having as you can see all of these lines look a lot more like curved and defined now and also the other thing that was bothering me was that this area right here was already off grain so the plaid wasn't going like straight up and down side to side it was already at an angle and what I did actually it was very very simple was I cut little notches out of this curve here because this is the curved waist and my curve wasn't even before it was like way slanted one way and so that was causing everything else to slant here and it was also throwing off this area here which was then throwing off all of that so just by cutting those little slits and then kind of repleating this a little nicer so that it was right at the edge of the fabric as opposed to before I had some section folded down that has actually fixed everything so that's pretty amazing now what I'm going to do is I'm going to like take my curved edges down here where I have a lot of fabric to cut away and I'm going to press that and then I'm going to cut off I think one inch past where I've pressed that will give me the ability to either flatline it if I want to which I honestly don't think I do or just turn the edge twice and be able to sew a hem there uh, same with over here this area is a little bit more complicated because I don't know yet what the backdrop is going to look like so I'm tempted to try and leave it pinned or even to baste it because I actually really like how the pleats are laying for the most part so actually basting it's not a bad idea maybe I should do some hand basting in here 
while it's really still on the form, I will have to be careful down here where I am going to be cutting away a little fabric, like from this section here. But yeah, I think I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hand baste over here just to make sure everything stays in place. And I might machine baste the pleats actually up here because this already is the edge. And then this has to get cut away again. And then we've got the edge over here so I could baste those in place as well, baste those pleats. And yeah, that way I think I'll probably just do a twice turned hem by hand on those two edges right there. Then I will have to figure out how to do the red band to add that on, but I think everything else is looking really good. So now that the front is all squared away, I've just pinned up a bit of fabric here on the back. This is cross grain, like the straight of the grain is going this way, going across, and I've just kind of put some pins in the bustle section here, just into the skirt itself. I've done pleats into the waist, so a box pleat here and then large knife pleats at the waist. And what I'm trying to figure out is if I do want this lined with the red where like the turn back, this is the extra fabric I haven't cut off yet, the turn back would reveal that red in some way. And I don't know if I want that on one side or on both sides, but that's kind of what I'm thinking to mimic like this look right here where we see just a little bit of the turn back. But then there's also the lovely butt bow. So I'm kind of thinking maybe I need to go ahead and make the big bow moment on the back to see what that red kind of presents and see if red on sides is actually necessary. So let's go ahead and make the big red butt bow. What I'm doing here is I have cut four 16 and a half inch wide strips that go across the grain. And each of these, like this is going to be connected at the waist, for example, and hang down like that. And then two of them are gonna make these loops. I will probably need to do one additional for any of this sort of poofy stuff. And also my plan is to kind of potentially incorporate it in with this little sash bit too. I'm kind of hoping I can make this like detachable so this could kind of always be worn and this sash doesn't have to always be worn. So I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do that yet, but that is sort of my plan. So these are going to go right sides together, which I mean, you know, the sides are the same really. And they're gonna get sewn like this and then turned right sides out and pressed to make themselves like one really wide piece of sash ribbon. And I'll finish off the bottom as well. So I'm kind of holding everything in place right here but as you can see, I have the long ribbon tails done. They do need to be cut a little because I don't want them dragging on the floor like they currently are. And then these ones, I actually sewed two of them together because I realized that the tails themselves were a little too long and therefore I can make the middle part into a sort of like yo-yo poof at the top. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I have it all scrunched up at the moment, but I'm going to run gathering stitches around the center, the side where the actual seam is. And that will turn into that little yo-yo looking poof and then I'll have the tails or the bow parts and then the tails down at the bottom. I also think it's so interesting how it really does turn into green depending on how it catches the light so like the tails are green but the top part is red right now and it's entirely dependent on lighting because there you go, it turns into red again. So yeah, I think that's really interesting. I'm gonna run this gathering stitch probably by hand because generally like a big yo-yo like this when you're making a rosette, you want those to be really large gathering stitches, like larger than you can do on a machine. So I think I'm just gonna run those by hand and then uh, I'll just have to sew these tails together. But that is the bow, butt bow tail look thing done. So this is what the bow is looking like now. The pieces aren't actually sewn together yet, but I do also have the sash on there and the sash is going to kind of give a little bit more of the squiggle of this as well with like two ends there. And what I'm trying to figure out is still the overskirt portion and whether or not I do want it to be lined with red and have like a turn back here. And I'm going to kind of show you in the mirror if I can. So this is what it looks like right now with it kind of turned back, but it plaid turned back as opposed to red. And then because it is asymmetrical, this is what the other side is looking like here with no sort of turn back at all. This was just where the pleats are starting in that skirt. And I feel like this looks a little bit plain, like it needs something, but I kind of feel like what it needs is like we have on the other side, just kind of more of the plaid turned back as opposed to more red. Because I like 
the pop of red that we're getting with the bow. And then we do have the red there anyway because of the underskirt. So I just feel like we need more of the plaid to be turned back and maybe incorporated into the bustle as opposed to more red. Now that said, this bow is actually kind of weighing down this and I feel like I want more body on it. And obviously lining it with the red would help give it more body but I just feel like that's not going to work. I can't line it with obviously something else because if I'm turning it back, I am gonna see the reverse. So I'm almost thinking about double layering it with the plaid. I do have a lot of plaid left. I'm actually starting to run slightly lower on the red. This is how much red we have left. And I do want to be able to do that second bodice bit, but that's I think pretty much all of the red that I need left to do. The plaid, we still have more wrapped around here, plus all of this on the floor. Obviously, we do need to get the entire bodice out of that, but I think that there is plenty to make the back just wider. Like, for example, I mean, this right here, if we have this much extra and then kind of cut away from there on each side, I think that that's actually probably the right idea. So we're looking at probably about half a yard extra on each side. So like one yard extra going into this. And then of course we are also going to line that. So that should be plenty as far as what I have left. I should have plenty. So yeah, I think that is going to be the plan. Also, for those of you who are curious, this is what Dora looks like in the silk. I know you always like to see what colors she looks best in. I personally don't think that this is her best color. So I have repleated the back of the skirt now so that I have about a yard on each side, basically to this first pleat from the edge is 38 inches. And so this side is now turned back and I've also got one pin that's just like holding it bustled up. That's kind of basically right where I'm pointing right there. And so this is what the shape of the skirt is looking like at the moment. And I think I like it. I don't have a pin on this side yet and it's not cut off either, but hi Dora jump but yeah so that's what it's looking like I am going to go ahead and cut off the excess over here I'm not gonna line it I think I'm just gonna do it as is because I mean right now granted I don't have the bow on it but it's looking okay and I'm just a little bit worried that if I do line it because I've added extra width to the sides then I might wind up running out of the fabric so yeah it's just gonna be a single layer and I will just turn the hem double and sew that by hand so I just wanted to show you what like the joins kind of look like and I'm in the process of pinning this one right now. So that's why I wanted to show you like how I'm getting this. Basically the rest of the waistband is already attached onto the skirt, but I wasn't sure with this end bit where I knew I had excess fabric up here and everything was all kind of, you know, pulled and bunched and basted up up here. And I do still have some of the pins in there as well and I've added more, but I wasn't sure like what angle this needed to be as it went into the waistband for me to get the drapes like I wanted them, which is what you're seeing here. So basically I just pulled this up, the basted area, added a couple of more pins to get it to pleat kind of how I wanted, and then brought it up against the waist of the dress form. And then I went and I pinned on the last, what is that, like four or five inches of the waistband. I just pinned it on where it would hit the waist of the dress form. So that's what you are seeing right here. This first mark, that is like the end of my waist measurement. And then I'm giving myself a one inch overlap. So basically the back part right here, usually I do front over back, but because of the way that this all comes together, it's back over front. And so the back part comes to this mark right here, like when I'm going to add hooks and bars and this inch in there is going to be an overlap between the two. And honestly, there's probably going to be more skirt overlap as well, because I can't just like cut this off at this angle. I'm going to have to cut this at this angle, fold in the top to give myself a nice clean edge so it's not a raw edge. And then from here, I'm probably going to do a couple of hooks and bars, or I might be anachronistic and actually use a couple of like whopper popper type snaps, the big snaps to over here just to get that to lay overlapped because that will be overlapped. This right now is not pinned to the form in the back. So I'm working with this section. And then the overlap on the other side, basically this is the turn back right here that is part of the back piece. And this will get bustled up like I showed you before, but then have the turn back there. I just thought it was kind of a nice drape look. And this 
basically comes just a tiny bit over this because I wanted it to practically split. So where the back part of this pleat is, like the part that's going this way, that is meeting up with this. That's how we're getting, see, you can see that pleat in there. That's how we're getting that. And then this overlaps just a tiny, tiny bit. So yeah, that is how that looks minus it being pulled up. And it should still give me access to pockets in here as well because there's my pocket so that actually works kind of perfectly so I'm going to go ahead finish sewing that bit on over there cut off the excess and then turn the waistband over and do the rest of the waistband the waistband is now all attached and basically the next step that I need to do well there's two steps one is I need to bustle up the actual back of the skirt with tapes and I also need to hem the area there that basically starts here and then goes down to well right now it's looking like the ground because the tapes aren't in however I ran out of twill tape with my sleepy hollow dress and Joann's doesn't sell twill tape which is great so I need to like I guess just order some twill tape or something so that I can do this later so unfortunately that's going to have to wait because obviously part of this is going to get cut off maybe it's not so obvious but basically when this is lifted up there's still a bit that touches down to the ground I have it kind of pinned up and out of the way you can see some of the pins there but I'm just not sure if that's how it's going to need to be until after I do the tapes so tapes will come next so let's go ahead and just assemble the bow sash section and then that will probably be it for this week. Okay, so right now we are looking at the back of the whole like bustle rosette bow situation here. And I've created kind of this sort of flat section by actually just rolling over the long tails up at the top where it's all joined in. As you can see, there are lots of little stitches all together, hand stitches, just keeping all of this together. So now what's gonna happen on here, it's not historically accurate whatsoever because I don't think snaps had been invented yet, but we are going to try doing this with snaps. So in the center, I am going to put one, maybe two, I'm not positive, possibly two, because I think that seems more secure, large snaps that will attach to the waistband. But I'm also going to put snaps, in fact, I don't know, maybe I'll just do like three snaps, because I was going to do one large one to the skirt. And then over here, I'm going to put snaps that will actually attach to the like band thing the little sash thing because I want all of this to be separatable since I'm doing the whole like red over bodice thing or at least that is still my plan and that way when I have the red bodice on I can choose to just wear this or I can choose to have it attached here to the sash that will go around the front if I'm not wearing that bodice so yeah that's kind of my plan I hope that this works out but I am going to go sew on a whole bunch of Whopper Poppers now to basically everything. Here we go. It is snapped into the back of the skirt now. So I've just got two big Whopper Poppers. I realized I could use the same ones on here and then just put the other two on here and then also on the sash. However, I am actually going to wait on the sash because I think I want to try it on first just to make sure I have the right measurement because this isn't like the full waist as far as like once it gets to the Whopper Poppers. I'm a little off center on the dress form right now, but once it gets to the Whopper Poppers, it's not quite the full waist. And then also this sash is so wide that it's going to actually go above my waist as well. And I just don't want to get it too short basically by putting the Whopper Poppers in the wrong place. So yeah, I'm gonna wait on that till I try it on. But that is what the overskirt combo looks like right now, kind of haphazardly thrown onto here. I do think I need an additional closure, probably a small snap where these pleats are just to make them stay in place underneath the turn back. So I'll probably put like a little snap right there. But again, I think that might be something like once I try it on, I can see, you know, exactly what I need. And and then, of course, I will have to wait on twill tapes to arrive here from someplace that isn't Joanne's. Because why doesn't Joanne sell twill tape? But it is what it is. Unfortunately, though, the try-ons will have to wait until next week because I am once again out of time for sewing this week. So I did get most of the whole overskirt situation done. Obviously, I need to figure out how the sash is going to incorporate size-wise once I try it on. I did order twill tape from Amazon. I'll link what I purchased down below just in case you're looking for any twill tape because your Joann's doesn't carry it. I know some Joann's apparently do. 
mine I guess does not so yeah I ordered like I think 50 yards of tool tape so I'll have tool tape for the rest of my life which is cool uh, and yeah, that should come on like Thursday, I think. So I will wind up bustling up the skirt then. I'll show that in the next part of this project. And then I've got like the hemming and stuff to do again once I try this on. So not too bad. We're most of the way through the overskirt and hopefully I can get the bodice done in the next video on this project. That said, next week's video is actually not going to be on this project. It's going to be on a Christmas dress because I want a Christmas dress that I can just wear like kind of every day and currently right now it is November 27th and so that way if I make it like right away I will have most of the month of December to actually wear said Christmas dress. I'm starting to worry a little bit about finishing this in time for Christmas but I also don't have like any event in particular that I'm intending to wear this to so I really don't have a deadline which of course makes it harder to focus on things. Are you like that? Because I'm like that. I tend to work best if I do have a deadline that is you know upcoming. Not super crunch time but upcoming gently. Anyway, that is going to be it for me this week on this project. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, like the rest of this series, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube at least once a week with sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and sometimes additional content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, Channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below, or you can send me a super thanks or join my YouTube channel memberships right here on YouTube. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Jean and Janelle. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing! <laughs>